Now anything in small quantities on a regular basis incorporate in the diet turn to help the body but anything when gone overboard just by trying to use its potential seems to harm the body more. Soya is one of such products which today is on, the, on every market shelf and everybody would like to consume it thinking that lactose is not good for them or cow's milk is not good for them so the alternative they would like to choose is soya. Yes, it is a very rich source of protein. Yes, it is good for the body but yet when we talk about it and use it as a dietary product it has its own limitations. The ancient Japanese and the Chinese were the ones to use this more because it was grown in their country and secondly they had their genetic tuning towards soya. It is a protein rich, rich substance which builds up the muscle tones of the body. At the same time it is seen to be working on the hormonal aspects of the body. Now as we all know hormones are secretions which are from ductless glands and they have their secretions poured directly into blood. So all of us have a clock on, based on which the hormones get secreted. If this clock of nature is disturbed or if there is a slightest change in the hormones, the body undergoes a very, very drastic change. It is very well, ob I'm sorry, it is very well observed today that soya tends to secrete more of estrogens and because of this, the men normally have problems who consume more of soya. If men have to consume soya, it has to be in a very proportionate form, very little quantities. It could be either in the form of tofu or in the form of a small quantity of soy milk or in India or in countries where they make their own bread. Uh, soya say about 250 grams to 500 grams is added for 5 kilos of the wheat or any other grain that they would use which is put pounded in the mill so that it is a part which is included into the making of the bread. Otherwise, higher quantities of soya tend to harm the masculine part of the body.